Our topic is microplastic abundance in the topsoil compared to distance from the Red River. I'm Morgan Comer. I'm Dustin Traffy. And Lydia Durrett. I'm Amelia Bjorklund. So like I said, we investigated the number of plastics, specifically microplastics that were found within the topsoil. And we conducted our experiment in areas that are varying distances away from the Red River. And we wanted to determine if there was a relationship between the distance and the amount of microplastics that were found in the soil. So you can see our hypothesis listed under introduction. Um, our hypothesis was that plastic abundance in the soil would increase closer to the Red River. And we thought that this was an important research topic because of the amount of plastic circulating on Earth and the negative implications um, that that can have on our ecosystem. So moving on to our methods, we went to one location near the Red River in Moorhead, Minnesota. We used three sites within this location. Um, the distances were measured from the river using a wheeled measuring tape. Uh, at each site, we placed a 12 by 12 square onto the ground and dug into the topsoil using handheld shovels about four inches into the topsoil. Um, each site was, we started uh, three meters away, 32 meters away, and then 74 meters finally. Uh, the soils were collected and divided into three quarts for each site, a total of nine samples. Uh, the collected soil was divided into and dried over the week. The dried soil was sifted to remove the rocks and large pieces of organic material, um, which then became crushed using a mortar and pestle. Uh, once we finished with that, uh, we combined the soil into a hydrogen peroxide mixture to dissolve the remaining organic material. And these mixtures were then put through a filtration system to remove the excess hydro hydrogen peroxide. This was then uh, placed into a jar with about 30 grams of canola oil and the jars were shaken for 30 seconds. A week later, we removed the oil containing the or inorganic material and placed them into beakers. And each oil sample was put through a filtration system once again, uh, leaving behind the inorganic material to leave the microplastic, the identifiable microplastics onto the filter paper. And going into the results, as stated earlier in the methods, each site was, uh, we collected three samples, but in the end, due to time constraints, we can uh, combined each sample site, each of the three into one, which leave, left us with three samples that we measured. And uh, statistical tests were ran via uh, JMP or JUMP. And uh, the average uh, identifiable, identifiable microplastics between the three total counts was 5.33. And as you can see with the um, graph or the chart given, as the distance from the river increased, the abundance of microplastics uh, decreased. And the correlation value was 0.92, which explains some of the difference in our data, most of it. And with such a small data set, it's actually quite surprising that it was that high. And the reason uh, there's no error bars, if you're wondering on our uh, data, it's because this is a comparison of total counts, not averages. Uh, like Dustin said, we saw a trend, though there wasn't any statistical significance in the data. Um, but we saw a trend with more microplastics ending up accumulated in the soil closer to the river. Um, so we hypothesized and thought about what this could mean. Um, one of the things we came up with was that microplastics are likely being washed down the watershed where they're accumulating in the soil near the river. Um, and we thought about what this could mean for the river itself. They're likely being washed into the water and could have detrimental effects on the aquatic species drinking water, as well as disrupting other ecological processes. Um, this left us with a few questions, uh, such as what are the effects on human health, and could this possibly be an issue of environmental justice? 